We're going to start with the news that Richarlison is looking to be leaving Everton for Spurs in a deal that is all but done. A guaranteed £50 million plus £10 million in add-ons, so £60 million it could go up to overall. That uh, Spurs reaching an agreement in principle to sign the forwards as we now welcome in Julian Laurent, Shaka Hislop and Don Hutchison. And as a former Everton player, Don, I'd like to start with you. What are your thoughts on the move? Because we hinted a little bit of scepticism on Twitter from you today. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm OK with the move, Kay. Um, I think the Everton camp, I think, on social media that I've been speaking to are quite sort of split as well. I think it's a 50-50 split. I think they thank Richarlison for the work that he's done. I think without his work in the last two or three months of the season, Everton wouldn't have stayed in the Premier League. He was outstanding. I see a player, and I think the first two or three years, especially that was quite petulant, played for himself. His goal return in the Premier League is not amazing. He hits probably 10 or 11 on average every single season. So to get £60 million, as long as Frank Lampard gets that money to spend and reinvest in the squad, I think they can move on pretty quickly. I think it's quite painful that they've lost a good player, and obviously it might sting for a day or two. But if Frank brings the players that he wants in the correct positions, I certainly think he's replaceable. What are your initial thoughts on this, Craig? Um, my first thoughts are, why wouldn't you want to leave Everton? <laughs> well, they're a shambles. They're a shambles of a club at the moment. Yeah, I mean, they've got a new manager. Yeah, they've got uh, some changes at boardroom level during the year. But why wouldn't you want to leave? They've, they've wasted you know, dollar after dollar after dollar. They'll get money for Richardson. There's a fair chance they'll go and uh, wash that down the Swanee. So why wouldn't you want to take an opportunity to go and test yourself at a club that's fighting? I'm not saying Everton are not a big historic club. They are, but they have spent their money extremely poorly. They've hired and fired managers for fun. There's been a big turnover of players. They've got a very poor squad. They only avoided relegation uh, by a thread. And here we have a chance to go to Tottenham, who are in the Champions League. At the moment, they have a very good manager, Antonio Conte. Of course, they could leave in a whim. But at the moment, he's managing the football club. They've brought in Perisic. They've got Kulisewski and Benton Kerr last year. They've got Hongman son, Harry Kane still there, and Lucas Moura. Go in and add to that and give, and give them options. You look at City and Liverpool and all these teams, even Chelsea. You know, OK, they didn't perform brilliantly, but they have options and they might be getting some more options in, in, in the attacking third. So why not try and bolster that part of the team? And if I was Richarlison, I would be quite buoyant about trying to make that move. Uh, where will he fit in then, Jules? Because that's a lot of money to spend when Craig just listed off the players like Kane, Son, Kulusevski, who did really well since he's come in. £60 million would be a lot for a backup forward, wouldn't it? Yeah, it is a lot of money, uh, certainly, especially if you add the 10 million in bonuses, which I'm being told that, well, for most of it, it's quite easy to, to reach or reachable, let's put it that way. So he could easily go to 60, which is very close to Spurs record signing, which is Tanguy and Dombele at 62 million pounds. So this is this is the most they've ever spent on one player. And you're right, I don't see how he can take Son's place or Kane's place or even Kuluzewski's place because Kuluzewski has been very good since he arrived in January in, in doing exactly what Antonio Conte does. However, what Conte wanted, and I guess that has a price, is depth in the squad, is more options, is is more numbers and and is and is more talent. And certainly Richarlison, even if I agree with Don, I, I'm not the biggest fan. What he gives you off the ball as well, with all the running and the character and the pressing and all of that is very valuable for a coach like Conte. It seems, Shaka, that Spurs are a very attractive prospect for many a player now. Yeah, there, there would be, of course, um, given Antonio Conte in the hot seat, Champions League football to, to come next season, um, and, and some of some of the other big clubs in, in, in English football, namely namely Manchester United, can't can't boast as much. Eric Ten Hag is still an unknown quantity, certainly at this level with a club of, of this stature. Um, so it, it makes a lot of sense that that players want to come to, to Spurs and and see where, where the future where the future leads them. That seems a little bit more more certain than some of the other other challenges uh, as as I just mentioned. I, I'm, I, I'm similar to the boys and I think what Joe said I, I've never really watched Everton and Richarlison and thought not to say that he's not a good player right because he is and anybody playing that kind of level and playing for your country Brazil is, is a good player but I've never watched him and oh I'd have him. I've never really went, oh, boy, I'd need to go and get him. Mm. However, th this is the kind of age we're in now where it it's 50, 60 million if you're at the top elite level to bolster your squad. 
it used to be five or ten million to, to, to bring in a couple of guys to be back up and I'm not suggesting he'll be back up we don't know when the season starts what will happen uh, but that's the price you pay now and somehow Antonio Conte seems to have convinced a very frugal Tottenham board and ownership that, that now that I've got you in the Champions League and and if you want me to stay, then this is what we have to do if we're going to maintain this forward momentum. Don, speaking about that as well, Antonio Conte, obviously got to be a pull here. There's a feeling for many that Conte and Richarlison could be a match made in heaven and that he's just the type of player that Conte loves. He could be, but as I said before, you know, he is quite petulant and, you know, he'll get wiser and he'll get, he'll get more, I think, understanding of his teammates and he goes to a brand new club, it's different. He, he's probably... He felt as though he was the big fish at Everton so he could express his feelings and his character. Like Jules said, once you go to a new club with a manager like Conte, he's going to have to tone it down a little bit and be more of a team player. I think he's in direct rival with Kulusevski for the starting sort of berth, if you like, because I think Perisic will play as a left wing back in that, in that three like Conte likes to play. So it'll be for sure Son off the left-hand side, Harry Kane through the middle, then Richarlison battling Kulusevski for that spot on the right-hand side. So... He's going to have to knuckle down. He's going to have to work because the talent is there. I think as much as I'm saying he is, he has been petulant and he's not really a team player, you know when you watch him, he's a gifted player. Everton fans, as I said, Kay, have been split. A lot, a lot of them loving and thank him for the work because he knuckled down and without him, Everton no way would have been in the Premier League because he was brilliant for the, the two or three months at the end of the season. But I think he's got a, a way to go to convince everyone watching him that he's a really elite player. So hopefully for him... This is a sort of new challenge and an unbelievable manager to, to respect and work under. And if you can't work and, and respect someone like Antonio Conte, who will get the better of you, then he'll have a problem. But he could play around Harry Kane along with Mora or Son or wherever. But what happens, you know, if, we're con if you're thinking about it from manager's perspective, you know, as good as Harry Kane's been, what if Harry Kane turns an ankle and he's out for a month? Where, where, where did Conte turn? He didn't really have anybody of that help to turn. Yeah, I mean, Richards is not going to drop off like Kane does in the middle of the park and hit 60-yard balls as good as anybody in the country. He's not going to score the goals that Harry Kane scored, but at least he'll have somebody if Kane has a problem that he can put through the middle and he's got that physicality. He'll run and he'll chase and he'll have a good attitude. Yeah, he spends a lot of time on the floor and that's a little bit frustrating or a lot frustrating watching him sometimes be on the floor, but he'll still fight and he'll put himself around. As Don was saying, I don't think you could ever accuse him at Goodison of not having a good attitude, not putting it in, not wearing the jersey with some pride. So at least, you know, we talk about, well, where will he play? But what if some, you know, he'll be looking at it, uh, Antonio Conte, what if Kane's a six-week hamstring or something? I need some physicality up there. I need somebody that hung Min's son or Kulisevsky. I need people that they can run off of. And so he just gives them a few more options in terms of positions and that physicality that Harry Kane brings to the team. If, and don't forget, Harry Kane's not 22 anymore, he's heading towards 30, you start picking up some niggles and some injuries, you need to have somebody that can come in and give you an option and I think it's a 60 million option but that's the price you pay in today's market. And surely Shaka Richarlison himself will be thinking that he can battle to get a starting spot here. Yeah, without question, I understand that from, from Richarlison. Uh, as a player, you always back yourself, regardless of, of how ridiculous the odds, the odds may be. It's people on the outside like us looking in who cast dispersions on, 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 on those chances. Now, for, for me, a, a lot about this move well, it does and, and doesn't make sense. From an Everton perspective, it makes an incredible sense. It, I, I think you get that money for a player who, despite his goals at the end of the season that Don was speaking about, um, I, I don't think he was, he was that great. A lot of his, his goals were rather scrappy, not really of, of the highest calibre. For, for Spurs, you, you, you get an option um, to play instead of Kulusevski or, or Spurs, but not a whole lot else. And from Richarlison's perspective, with a World Cup to come in six months' time, I'm sitting here thinking he doesn't get in, he, he's not an automatic start in the front three, and, and albeit he's, he's not really an automatic choice for, in the Brazil squad either. Not playing any football just sees him fall further and further back in, in the Brazilian pecking order. So from a, a professional perspective, certainly in the short term with the World Cup in mind, I, I, it, doesn't, it doesn't make sense for Richarlison either. So it's... As much as you understand wanting to get away from, from Goodison and going to some place like Spurs with all that's on offer, um, with the World Cup in mind, I, I, I don't see how, how it works.
Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.